Okay, so good morning, everyone. Uh, so wonderful to see how many people are here um, present in the Gompa, you know, taking, uh, we can set our motivation thinking we're taking this opportunity in our lives, you know, so precious, so rare, especially making this a very good, good Friday, uh, being, you know, I can't tell, but I come from a Christian tradition originally. <laughs> making the best Good Friday. So we can set our motivation here thinking, you know, taking this opportunity, we've already created so many uh, conditions for us to come together, having to organise our lives to take either today or today and tomorrow, however much time, to spend time with each other, you know, uh, in uh, cultivating these, uh, well, today, focusing on shamatha, cultivating um, a sense of mental quiescence and balance, coming to our natural state of, of mind and focus and concentration. And to even have the thought, you know, to do this is, is already just an amazing amount of virtue, we say, positive energy, you know, from our side. Whether we're complete beginners this time or whether we're more advanced practitioners, you know, deepening our practice, familiarizing our practice, taking this opportunity. When there's uh, to quieten the mind, I think I was thinking this morning, it's the, uh, what's her name? Marie Kondo? Kondo? Of the mind. Declutter the mind. <laughs> I think we have to rename it. <laughs> and, um, you know, this is... Uh, those of us who have the opportunity to be here together, we know the power, or if we're first timers, maybe we don't know, um, the power of coming together as, as a group and that creating that, you know, we can, we've got two days, we can settle into this space, which is already a conducive environment for us, for meditation, especially I woke up this morning, I thought, ah, good Friday, no school today. So <laughs> a little bit quieter outside in our street as well. And so, uh, so that enables us, you know, to have all these external conditions and then to be able to then just work um, gently, spaciously, you know, being patient with ourselves, taking time, settling in, being, you know, pacing ourselves as we go through this time together, you know, sense of relaxing any sense of urgency or trying, or, you know, as soon as I say trying, I might furrow my brow relaxing that, let that be completely um, at ease. And uh, so as we go through today and tomorrow, I'll just give you the um, uh, planned outline for, for the days. Um, so we'll have um, a few sessions this morning. Uh, so from nine to... Uh, 10.15, well, from now till 10.15, and then we'll have a half hour break to 10.45 um, until 12. So those people on Zoom, just so you know where we're having the break times too. Um, in the tea breaks, if you wish to, I, we can leave you on and just have you on, um, not recorded, but uh, those people on Zoom, if you wanted to grab a cuppa and, and talk together, during the break time, we can make that happen. We can just, uh, uh, you know, unmute you and, and, or you can unmute yourself and, and we'll keep it muted here and uh, so forth. It seems to, that'd be, and then it's an option. You can do it either way. And then I think that'll be okay because we'll stop the recording. So we don't have to worry about the recording going on for too long. So then we have, um, we continue on from 10.45 to 12 o'clock. So it's, it's similar set up both days, just different um, style of meditation and um, so we'll have a break from 12 to 1 15 and then we'll come back for some discussion time and have another break um, uh, at 2 30 so 1 15 to 2 30 and then 3 to 4 so you don't have to remember all of that uh, I will remind you, and, and maybe, you know, things will shift slightly either side, but we'll try and stick to that um, for both days. 
And I'd also like to invite you as well to, um, you know, uh, I think I'm looking for space around the gompa because the gompa is fairly full, but if at any time you want to transfer from either a seat to the floor or vice versa, just, you know, um, we've got more seats up the back there, I think. Uh, yeah. There were more chairs up there or are they outside? Yep, up there. Um, so yeah, just um, feel free to go from one to the other. Uh, if anyone wishes to do some sessions lying down, that's okay too, just as long as respectfully not paint, pointing your feet towards any holy objects um, out of respect. And when we do lie down, it's not like snuggle up and go to sleep time. It's um, we have a on your back, a formal posture of putting your hands out to the, to the side. Um, like those of you who do yoga at the end, you come to the Shavasana posture. I think some people say they look forward to the end of the yoga session when they can lie down. And so it's a formal meditation posture with your hands out to the side and your neck well supported so the spine can be long and straight. So, um, and there are mats down the back as well. For that, there's space in the aisle, space up here, different places for that. So, you know, feel free to settle into this and make this your space. Those of us here, those of at home, you've already made that space your space. So I don't have to tell you what to do in terms of making your space your space. <clears throat> so today's focus on shamatha, calm abiding, developing concentration, meditation, developing a, a sense of um, mental stability, clarity. Stillness, accessing the capacity of the mind to be still as much as we can access that or just touch it, you know, experience that, savor that experience. For many years I was at um, Vajrayana Institute in Sydney. And uh, when I very first um, met Geshe Sampton, I think I was, um, no, I don't think I know, excuse me. Isn't right. I turned up, um, you know, as you do for the, the day long precepts, the sort of eight precepts that we take as day long precepts. And so you turn up before dawn. So I turned up to the center before dawn. And then it was my first encounter with Geshe Sampton. He came in to bestow the precepts and it was like this laser like attention, you know, whew, very focused mind, very concentrated mind. At that point, it was much later that I learned that Sampton meant that. <laughs> Single pointed focus concentration, Sampton, his name, I thought, hmm, he's living up to his name. <laughs> so we think about this single pointed um, concentration, cultivating this, and that, that you know, if you think these um, Geshe's or these great scholars, you know, have, have studied on the basis of that mind, you know, it gives us incredible power of the mind. To, to place that focus, that attention on whatever we want to, and for them to, to, to be able to study these vast texts over many years and then be able to just pull them out of their memory bank uh, is quite remarkable, you know, where this can lead us. So that's by way of just motivating us to engage well in the practice today. Of course, we. We, that's what we're here for, you know, that's what we set aside our time for. Okay, so we'll um, settle ourselves in. I think now everybody's found their, uh, everyone in the Gomper at least has found their, their space. Um, if also you don't want to move from where you are, but you want more cushions or so forth, it's, it's very good to be well supported, like I have a cushion under this knee, 
for example. So uh, whatever helps, you know your body, you know the limitations mm -hmm. of your body, you know the aches and pains of your body that are maybe not there now, but can come subsequently. So you make it work for you, you know. And if you need to take a break at, at any time, that's fine too. So you, you just set your own pace and be your own boss as, as we go through. Okay. okay, so each individual meditation will be about 25 minutes, about, I say about that, but within that, as I remember one teacher saying very early on, 99% of this is we're practicing, practicing, practicing to do that. So again, we keep a spacious attitude, um, delight that all the conditions have come together for us to be here, that we have each other and plenty of time for discussion in break times and so forth. So it's good to use those break times to actually, you know, sort of engage in our discussion about our meditation experiences in terms of um, any challenges that we have, uh, what helps and so forth, you know, at whatever level we're at, so that we can share that wisdom with each other and tips with each other for our practice. Alrighty, so, okay, so here we are. We've got the external conducive conditions. And so then settling yourself into not just this physical space, but into the space of the body. And one of the ways that um, can be helpful with this and helpful throughout the meditation to quieten this um, busy mind of ours, to bring it you know, more into a conducive um, state for engaging in meditation. One of the ways we use is um, a nine round breathing meditation. So just to explain, and then you can, can do that. And you can, you know, you can continue on doing it a few times at times during any of the meditation sessions where you feel like your mind's too elsewhere, then you can also pause and, and, and reintroduce that. Uh, it's just it, one of the very grounding um, techniques. I led a... Um, at, at Chen Resig Institute, a three-month budget suffer retreat, and uh, one of the gentlemen there, uh, he, he was like, I just love that nine round, I do it all the time. <laughs> so, uh, okay, so what this is, is um, this is just a very simple approach to the nine round breathing. There are many different variations on, on this, but the most simple one is that, um, and what's interesting is that we're, we're focusing on the breath and the intent is that we get to a point where the breath is um, even in both nostrils. So most of the time we've got one nostril or the other nostril more dominant. We probably notice this when we've got a blocked nostril, but all the time one nostril or the other nostril is more dominant in terms of the flow of breath. They're not even. And Geshe Samta, when I was, you know, I was in uh, Sydney one time when there, uh, there was the lunar eclipse. I think it was last year. And he said, this is one time for us as ordinary beings when that breath in the both nostrils becomes even, right? And so, the lunar eclipse is happening and I'm sort of standing there, you know, as so we're sort of watching the lunar eclipse, but then not watching and just saying, can I tell if my breath is even, even? <laughs> can I even tell if it's even? <laughs> and of course, the other times it happens, you know, when uh, the highly advanced uh, practitioners and they have that sort of, they attain this state of, of, of shamatha, of calm abiding and so forth in very exquisite levels where you can have that, exquisite mental quiescence balance of the mind, which is what we all crave, right? Okay, so I'll, I'll give the instruction and then we can do it. Um, and then you can do it in your own pace and then just settle into your natural rhythm of the breath, okay, in, in your body. 
So we breathe in three times uh, in, intentionally through the left nostril, three times intentionally out through the right nostril. So that's one round of three. And then breathing in intentionally through the right nostril and intentionally out through the left nostril, second round, and then intentional three times, and then intentionally through both nostrils and intentionally out through both nostrils. And all the time thinking that we're bringing our breath, you know, right down <clears throat> into our abdomen and out and maintaining as much as we can without squeezing and prying with a spacious mind, with a spacious attitude to, um, you know, follow every moment of the breath in, every moment of the breath out. So as it comes in, out, in, out, and through both and out. So, so now we're all, all settled slightly. And then I'll guide you through the rest of the meditation. Okay. So um, we can start with this nine round breathing in your own time, settling ourselves into the space of the body. Continuing to just be, to invite your full awareness into the space of the body. So rare that our body and mind come together in one moment, and the breath is a perfect object to allow that because we can all breathe right now. Just dwelling your awareness, getting a sense of retreating more and more into the space internally your inner experience. The sense of spaciousness around each moment of the breath, really savoring each moment of the breath in your body, with the whole of your body imbuing it with a sense of comfort, ease, relaxation, stillness.
and to enhance that experience with a sense of making uh, you know, our body more conducive to settle into that comfort and ease, state of relaxation, unwinding any knots or tensions or so forth. So focusing more on, on the breath out of releasing, relaxing, letting go, you can start, for example, being aware of sensations at the crown of your head, maybe a slight pressure or a warmth or maybe nothing at all, but just a sense of spaciousness around that, the crown. And bringing our awareness down to the face and the head where the all the sense consciousnesses are focused. So for example, allowing the eyes to rest in the sockets, feel the weight of that, and the space around that. Releasing any tension with the breath out, letting go. Our eyes are so much engaged throughout the day and discerning objects and making contact with others and so forth. They can take a break, just rest. If you have your eyes open, closed, you can experiment either which way, whatever benefits you right now. Softening the tension around the, around the forehead, feeling a sense of spaciousness there, openness, relaxation, expansiveness. And in the back of the head, Softening, releasing, relaxing the jaw. So the jaw is not sort of clamped shut. The, the mouth is fully open, but the lips lightly touching. It's really soft. If you think about it like a contented, well-fed newborn baby, completely soft, smooth, relaxed face. placing the tip of the tongue behind the upper teeth, which allows a <clears throat> openness in our airways. Sense of spaciousness there. And the shoulders, feeling the, allowing the shoulders to just <clears throat> Be soft, feel the weight of that. Releasing the weight we carry on our shoulders, softening with each moment of the breath out, all the way to the end of the breath out. <clears throat> Release, relax, let go. sense of spaciousness around the chest, the front, the back, and the upper back. With the breath in, the expansion, and then softening, softening more and more with the breath out, releasing any tightness, any tension, intercostal muscles, or, or around the organs, allowing the breath to bring the body more and more to a state of Balance, healing. Just 
settling into a state of ease and spaciousness. Feeling the weight of both arms with it. Hands resting in your lap if you're sitting, however they are, just in a very relaxed way. Not needing to do anything, go anywhere, just settling in to the zone, the meditation zone. Bring your awareness down to the softness of the belly. Notice from the level of the skin, the outside, and then in the muscles, and then deep in the abdominal cavity, and feeling that sense of groundedness, stability, well supported by the cushion, the chair, the mat, ground below, coming up to support you in your posture, being a sense of safety, reliability. Stability and connectedness to the earth below. And through that stability and release of tension in your legs that allows for more firmness, more reliability, more space, your legs supporting you. And those sitting in chairs and feeling that connectedness of soles of your feet as well to the ground below feeling that you know allow them to be spacious spread out relax completely firmly gently providing stable foundation So then the mind can settle more and more into this conducive inner space, continuing to focus on the natural rhythm on your breath, wherever you experience that, to the spaciousness each moment of the breath out, letting go, any tension, any tightness, releasing, relaxing. And then as, as you breathe in, just slightly tighten your focus on the breath bringing in the oxygen, replenishing all our cells and organs and refreshing the mind on what we're engaging here. Simply aware of the breath, each moment of the breath arising. I'm going to turn around to the breath out, release, relax, let go. Finding our own balance, our body and mind coming to that state of exquisite balance, of rest, of stillness, of spaciousness, of presence.
continuing to attend simply to the breath, the sensations of the breath, wherever you experience that, and elevating your attention to the opening of the nostrils where the breath, you know, the outside air enters the body, becomes breath. So placing your awareness right at the base of the, of the nostrils, just above the upper lip around that area. Simply settle into whatever will not you know, focus more, slightly more, to actually be aware of whatever sensations, the volume of the breath, the, the whole of the breath in, the whole of the breath out, just right there at the opening of the nostrils. Without furrowing the brow, tensing, tightening, keeping that sense of spaciousness, openness, a vast spaciousness and yet a very fine attention to the sensations of the breath just as they are the volume of the breath the rhythm of the breath is perfect you know, keeping you alive done a good job so far it's not changing the breath here we are cultivating more focused attention And so that the mind, to, to challenge the mind to, to stay focused there, you can introduce this element of counting the breath. So as we breathe in, we can count just at the top of the breath in one and release it with the breath out. It's not like one, two, three. And this enhances our mindfulness, you know, to be able to notice Whenever the mind gets distracted, drifted away from the meditation, drifting away from focusing there at the opening of the nostrils, forgotten what we're doing or weakened the attention, thoughts get in the way or we experience it as getting in the way. As soon as we notice that, simply relax, release whatever is distracting us, taking our attention elsewhere, and refocus the attention on the breath and start our count again from one. So it's not a matter of how many numbers we can count, we can all count. It's a matter of enhancing our quality of mindfulness. To notice when the mind does get distracted and gently release. When we reset our attention on the breath and start again from one this spacious openness we've already established we can continue in that way
any time we forget about what we're doing, forget about the counting and so forth. As soon as we're aware of that, release, relax, let go. Take our time to refresh our attention on the breath. Re-establish our focus of our meditation. Re-establish the counting of the breath lightly. Check out from time to time that we're not tightening up and squeezing the mind, squeezing the body. So it's spacious, open. Mind is attentive to the sensations of the breath. Simply at the opening of the nostrils, and then we can release the counting and stay with that whatever clarity we've established there, whatever mindfulness of the sensations of the breath, see if that's enhanced our experience, our awareness of the breath at the nostril. Where the quality, settling into this space, settling into the space of our body, settling the mind, with stillness, we've cultivated, and hold them in our conscious awareness. So as we bring this meditation to a close we can bring that into that quality into our engagement so that there's a seamlessness between 
the meditation space and the post meditation space so it's not two separate experiences So typically, you know, when we use the bell at the end of a meditation, we tend to end, but allow ourselves to stay with that stillness and with the ringing of the bell, feel that resonance, reverberation, the space around that, like from the experience within the space of your body, not as a sound out there, even though it is a sound out there, but the experience of that keeping our awareness within the space of the body, not going outwards. So if you wish to stand up and or stretch out your legs or, or so forth or jiggle, <laughs> that's okay. You know. You want to come up closer or? Yeah, I know that's a challenge when we're going to meditation and my voice goes down. <laughs> okay, I have to thank you. Okay, I'll remember. Project. Yes. Only just a little bit more. So little Only just a little bit more. Yeah, I, I, yeah. It's it's always a challenge. <laughs> Anybody else uh, yeah. sound a bit soft? Yeah. Yes, the people up the back. <laughs> okay. Can you turn up the volume on your speaker? I don't know. It's over there somewhere. I think if I just, you know, turn up the volume on myself, it might work. Yes. <laughs> <clears throat> um the door uh, the um you have to turn it a couple of times yeah excellent okay so so these series of meditations throughout the day yes we're um uh, in one sense the breath is a perfect object for 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 meditation in terms of the fact it does bring us into the present moment that it's not like we can breathe retrospectively or prospectively. So it, it does bring us, when we're focused on the breath, into the present moment. It's also very intimately connected with our emotional state, even though it's a physiological thing in our body. You know, we don't have to tell the mind, calm down, calm down, pay attention. It simply, it comes to that state because that's the nature of that, you know, that very intimate connection of the, of the breath with our emotional state, which we know, you know, if we get a shock or something, we hold our breath or 
we might have shallow breaths if we're anxious or afraid, all sorts of things, you know, we can observe. And also, the more we go on in practice, if we take that as our ongoing object of meditation, it gets more subtle, you know. And so then we can have to settle the mind more and more, and we're able to do that and develop more and more levels of concentration. And then we can apply that anytime throughout the day, you know, when we've got a so-called waiting moment, we can turn it to a meditating moment and just focus our attention on the breath and use that as an anchor. And, a, and on top of that, uh, how's this sound level? Of course, it's good when I'm not leading the meditation, isn't it? <laughs> um, and so then on top of that, of course, all of, all of our meditation practices are about the mind. Mm -hmm. So getting a, a sense of the mind. So here we're going to um, in, you know, attempt to touch that experience of that clarity of the mind, the mind in its natural state that we yearn for, that stillness, that peace, that clarity, that lack of clutter, that decluttered mind. And the more that we use that as our object of meditation, the more that we let go of these fixations of the mind of, you know, concretizing our thoughts as if they were something solid to grab hold of. And then we create whole stories on top of that and it becomes our reality. Whereas it's essenceless, you know, in, in reality, it's essenceless. So then it creates more, you know, just we're, we're emphasizing a sense of spaciousness a sense of openness and cultivating more that quality, which allows the mind then to be more fluid, which it naturally is, allows the mind to be more creative, more imaginative. We will say, no, my mind's imaginative enough, thank you very much. But, it, you know, put in the, in the right direction and, and enhance it, positive qualities of our mind, because our mind is impermanent you know and constantly subject to change so we can create space around our fixations of the mind and allow them to you know have have more breathing space if you like and uh, you know experience that sense of essence lessness of of all that arises in the mind because it is the job of the mind to think and we'll be using that capacity more tomorrow when we look at more analytical meditations, the Pashna insight meditations. But here today, we're using that opportunity to cultivate that stillness of the mind, that quiescence of the mind. So here in this meditation, we'll be investigating that in terms of the experience of the um, actual nature of the mind being one of clarity, of translucence, of unobstructed space. So this particular meditation, we're using the analogy of like the sky, like blue sky, and that sense of vastness, just as an analogy, it's not what the mind is, but we use these analogies to try and access that experience. And again, when I was in Sydney, you know, when I was um, felt like, you know, I was I was at the computer and working away and felt like everything had got narrow and too focused down. And so I'd go outside because I'm living in the city of Sydney, right? Go outside and just sort of try and find a bit of space spacious sky <laughs> that's not cluttered up already by trees and planes and buildings. <laughs> There's a lot of things happening up there. <laughs> anyway, so it's very good, you know, to uh, go out and we do that. We do that naturally. We go out for walks or into space, uh, you know, to experience that sense of spaciousness externally. So if we're using those analogy to experience that internally. Okay, so settling into <clears throat> your posture, <clears throat> either as before or change your posture, adapt according to your needs.
And so we can begin by taking three deep breaths, you know, inhaling through our nostrils, bringing it down deep into that abdomen, you know, filling up the abdomen and holding it there for a minute and then softly release, relax, let go, and then continue on with our natural rhythm of breath to bring ourselves back into the space of the body, into a conducive mindset for settling into this meditation. observing observing the natural rhythm of your breath just as it is completely perfect in its natural rhythm without thinking conceptualizing creating a story around that just the breath cultivating a sense of clarity of the breath. And then turning your attention to that clarity of consciousness, of awareness, of the mind itself. So it's not that the mind is located somewhere. It's simply whatever we're experiencing in the moment by moment, sensations in our body, thoughts, feelings, our perceptions of sounds, sounds outside of ourselves, sounds inside ourselves. As the Buddha said, in the herd, there is just the herd. So the nature of each of these experiences is clarity, which is the nature of the mind no form, no color, we may experience them as such. Let's see if we can attune our awareness to that space-like pure awareness, pure nature of mind in its natural state. So since it is difficult to access what this actually is, that clarity, that natural state of mind, 
we use these analogies, you know, using an image of clarity. Commonly, you know, visualizing a sense of space, a sense of spaciousness, pure, unobstructed space. So to do this, it can be helpful to imagine lying on top of a um, hilltop, or you could think of like Tibet, the rooftop of the world out there, and you know where you're just in touch with unobstructed space, and you're you're lying there staring up at the sky, and it completely. It, you know, not only do you see it or everywhere around you, it quickly comes down and envelops you, embraces you, and completely clear and free of clouds. And like the sun, on a, the sky on a sunny day, you know, it has that quality of, of luminosity. Bring your awareness to focus, to dwell in this vast, unobstructed, limitless space, this emptiness. Imagine it flows down and embraces you, embraces your surroundings, internal, external, everything, every moment of your experience, empty like space. And hold your mind in that experience. That the mind is like this, like that clear, vast, empty space, limitless, without obstruction. And so then when thoughts arise, which naturally they do, it's not what we're trying to push them away or stop them from arising, but just like clouds come and go into across that sky, we can just allow them to vaporize. You know, they arise, they drift off, they vaporize back into the space of the sky. They are in the nature of space themselves. So they like that. Remember, they're clear by nature. There's no substance. So we can watch them come and go, come and go, and simply bring our awareness back again and again to the mind's natural clarity, luminosity. It's infinite space.
Again, when thoughts arise, distractions arise, or we forget about the meditation or so forth, our mind gets dull or, or too much going on. We remind ourselves that it's all in the nature of, of space, of sheer luminosity of the mind. We don't have to work out what the mind is, just simply naturally settle into that natural state, a state of simplicity, clarity, and holding our mind on that sense of spaciousness continuously as much as we can without forgetting that, cultivating a concentration on this natural state of mind, free of concepts, free of the busyness of the mind, dwelling there, cultivating stillness, clarity, awareness. If you can get that sense of this spaciousness, natural luminosity of mind as of awareness, being like an inner light that illuminates things more clearly, so we see more clearly. It gives a sense of feeling light, relaxed, spacious. You know, overcoming the sense of heaviness or solidity or concreteness of how things appear to us. Simply dwelling in a spacious clarity as vast as the sky.
holding your awareness in that spaciousness, that clarity, that lightness, luminosity of the mind. We can gather together all that energy, all that experience to consolidate that in our awareness. Something we can familiarize with, return again and again in our experience. So hence our quality of mind. And counteract all the uh, stories our mind elaborates on top of what is there, what isn't there. Gathering together all that energy and we can gather together all the energy of the morning so far to continue to develop these qualities of mind. Continue to develop our potential to benefit of ourselves to benefit all those we encounter. Okay, so we'll take a half hour break. Um, if, uh, if there's anybody new to this space, uh, the bathrooms are behind, the toilets are behind, and then there's uh, tea and coffee or whatever there is out there. <laughs> um, refreshments, there's always refreshments in Dharma centers. <clears throat> And I think for, for lunchtime, um, people, it was suggested people bring their lunch, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so everyone's okay with that. Um, again, there's probably things in the fridge as well and, and around. Um, and, you know, make use of, because there's quite a few of us here in this space of the space in here, the space out there, space outside where it's uh, nice and sunny. And uh, see you back here at around 10.40. And to those online, I will um, just pause the recording and then you can unmute yourselves and uh, chat with each other if you wish. Um, introduce yourselves and wish to talk about uh, your meditation.